Grid tile bases are the heart of the modular grid tile system, and they're made pretty easily. They're three sheets of foam uh, with some bits cut out using templates. So I know they look a little complicated, but in, at their heart, they're just basically three sheets of foam. So let's get started. We're gonna start by making the top piece for the grid base, and that's made from this template that's in the tools and templates file. We're also gonna need these two guys. These are also from the tools and templates file. You wanna print them out, they're the plugs. Uh, we want, you wanna print those out and put them onto foam board. And you can add some masking tape around the edge there to make them more durable if you'd like. Then we're also gonna use this guy to make the bottom component of the grid base. And this is another tool from the accompanying tools and templates uh, file. So it kind of goes without saying, you should always have a sharp blade, but that's doubly true for making grid bases because we're gonna be cutting a lot of foam and we're also gonna be cutting through two sheets of foam at a time with hot glue in between. So you wanna make sure you have a sharp blade. So if you start feeling that the knife is is pulling on the foam or you're starting seeing bad cuts, immediately change your blade. You will be happy you did so because you're gonna have better grid bases because of it. Once you've got a nice sharp blade in your utility knife, we're gonna start by making the top portion of the grid base. And to do that, we're gonna cut out a 20 inch by 20 inch piece of foam board. And you can use another piece of foam board to measure that out since the foam board sheets are 20 inches wide. And then we're gonna start in one corner with the tool to make the tops. And we're gonna cut out the first square in the bottom left. I'm going to use that square to finish off this plug tool that we made. Now we're going to use this to hold the template in place so we get very accurate cuts. So you can put that new tool in the bottom left. Then you're going to cut the top right square out. Use that square to finish off our other tool here. Put that in the top right. Now it's anchored. So now we can easily cut out all these squares without worrying about the template moving. And you'll notice here I'm doing all the vertical cuts first, and then I'll do all the horizontal cuts. That makes it a lot faster to do this. And then it's just on to the horizontal cuts. Once these are all cut out, just pop them out and get them uh, out of the way. And then we're gonna use those existing squares we cut out and we're gonna anchor the tool to those squares. And we're gonna use that to, again, cut one of the corners on the other end of the tool so we can better anchor the tool while we cut. So in this case, I'm just doing the bottom right. You could have done the top right, but all you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the tool is plugged in in opposite corners because that's the best and most accurate way to hold it. And you'll do the same thing when you're doing bits above your uh, the squares you've already cut. So here I, I had it anchored in the bottom left and bottom right. And then I cut out an opposite corner to uh, make sure it's held in place well. So that's the general procedure is you, you anchor it on one side while cutting your final anchor point in the opposite corner. And then you anchor it with opposite corners and you cut out your squares. There you go, that's finished, ready to go. And then we're gonna make the bottom part of the base, which is two sheets of foam board, 20 inch by 20 inch, with the grain going perpendicular to each other. Just like you would for regular ground tiles in the basics manual, we're just making this out of two sheets of foam board with the grain going in opposite directions and then cut to 20 inches by 20 inches. I'm just cutting off the extra. If you haven't yet made grid square plugs, Go ahead and make two cross connectors. We're going to use those to anchor this template. And go ahead and grab one of those two sheets that you cut off. We're going to use that to put underneath this base while we cut it. So again, I can't stress this enough. Change your blade if it's even remotely dull because these are taxing on the blade. You're cutting through two sheets of foam board and hot glue into a third sheet that's laying underneath this base uh, to prop it up. You're gonna take and puncture through with your blade all the way, and then cut across and then end vertically. 
You want to do this in one motion. Push down, cut across, and end vertically. Push down, cut across, and end vertically. So you can see why you need a sharp blade, because you are cutting a lot of foam all at once. And for the tops of those crosses, like I'm cutting right there, you're, you're gonna cut through the tool and that's okay, but you just wanna make sure you push all the way through and cut all the way down and across. And once you have that first socket cut out, just get rid of the bits you don't need and then plug that cross connector so we anchor the tool. And we're gonna cut out the top right socket now I'm sure you're seeing some parallels between how we did the top component. It is exactly the same. We're just going to use this template instead of the other one, and we're going to anchor the template with cross connectors instead of those little plugs that we made. Pop that out. So we have our two connection points now. One cross connector in the bottom left and one in the top right. And then we go ahead and cut out all the sockets. Now you'll notice here I'm doing all the verticals first. That does make it a lot faster. And then I'll do all the horizontal cuts. And then the procedure is exactly the same as for the top component. You move the template over, anchor it, cut an opposite corner and anchor it, and then cut the rest out and then move it along. If you have already made some grid square plugs, you can also use those to anchor this tool. And you're gonna end up with a socketed base for grid bases. So now it's time to figure out what you want your grid bases to be. Here I'm doing a variation of different ones, like here I'm doing an L-shaped base, and I'm just kind of marking them out because I want to cut these out individually. So here I'm making two L bases. Here's two two by threes, and then two two by twos. It's a good idea to have a mix of different ones like 4x4s, 2x4s, 2x3s, and 2x2s. Then we're going to rough cut out all these different pieces using our ruler and our utility knife. So you want to be in the middle between those sockets. So don't worry about these cuts being super accurate. What we're going to do later on is once they're painted and then assembled, we're going to trim off the edges so they're perfect. There you go, you got a whole bunch of uh, grid bases now. So we're gonna wanna cut the corresponding piece out of the top component of the grid bases. So you can just kind of match them up like uh, using the bits you already cut out. So there you go, we've got a bunch of tops and bottoms ready to go for paint. You can see you can get a whole lot of grid bases out of just one 20 inch by 20 inch set of components. So now here's the thing, I'm just going to go over this now, but we're going to actually glue the top and bottoms together after the pieces are painted. But there's a rule of thumb you need to be aware of. When we glue them together, you don't want to have any hot glue gluing the top and bottoms together around the outside one square wide border of the grid bases. And that's because you want to be able to connect borders and grid connectors to them. So the problem becomes, what do you do in the case of grid bases that are only two squares wide? There's literally only a sliver in the middle to hot glue them together. Well, in that case, we're going to use some toothpicks. Toothpicks are going to add some strength and make the top and bottom really connect together. The worst case scenario is a two by two squared like you're seeing here. And yeah, that's pretty much just held together by a toothpick. And we'll go over how to put those in there in a sec. So we're going to paint the tops and bottoms of the grid bases in strong coat. And we're painting them separately so we can assemble them later and still have the ability to connect these bases together with grid connectors and put grid borders on them. The easiest method is really just to dip them and then either put them on our foil drying racks or use some of the other options in the manual. 
So keep in mind with these pieces with large surface areas, you may want to kind of take a look at them like 30, 40 minutes after you've dipped them and then wipe off any excess strong coat. So once those pieces are completely dry, we're going to put a bead of hot glue and then we're going to add some toothpicks. Uh, we're just doing that one bead of hot glue in the middle there because that's the only place we can really put hot glue safely. I'm going to use some cross connectors to position that top component. But we're definitely going to need toothpicks in this one, so let me show you how to put them in. You'll see that there are these holes in the template, and that's basically where you would punch through a toothpick to mark where the toothpick needs to go in the grid base. So just mark it with a toothpick by punching through the, the template. Then cut off one end of the toothpick so it doesn't have a point on it anymore. Test fit a little bit. Put some wood glue into the hole. And put the toothpick in all the way to the bottom. Now what you're going to do is once it's all the way to the bottom, pull it back just a little bit and then trim it off. Why did we pull it back? Well, because there's that thickness of the scissors there that we need to take into account. If we cut it off without pulling the toothpick back, then the toothpick would stick up from the top of the grid base. And once the tops and bottoms are glued to each other, it's time to trim off the edge to finalize the grid base. And we're going to use our grid tool again here and the scoring slits to mark the edge. And just take it off. Take out the cross connectors and then trim off the edge. Now you're going to do multiple shallow cuts with a nice sharp utility knife. So once these are trimmed to size, you're not going to want to paint the edges because you'll glue them shut. You will glue the top component to the bottom component and you won't be able to insert grid borders and connectors. So leave the edges unpainted. Don't worry, you won't see them when they're assembled. There you go, one finished grid base. And it's always a good idea to test fit either connectors or borders into the new grid base. You may find that there's some hot glue that's seeped into the wrong place or maybe a little bit of wood glue. It's pretty easy to fix. Just take a piece of chipboard and slide it in where the connectors will go and kind of saw it back and forth and it'll cut through any hot glue that may be making your borders and connectors not connect properly. Here's an image of several different types of two square wide bases. And you'll see that you're going to hot glue on all of them except the two by two. And then add toothpicks. You'll notice on that L-shaped one, I ended up adding more toothpicks. If you're ever in doubt, add more toothpicks rather than less. It'll just make for a stronger tile. But if you're doing tiles that are not two squares wide, like this four by four one, you don't need toothpicks at all. You can just do hot glue, making sure not to have any hot glue around the outer border of single squares. And don't be afraid to make big grid bases. It makes for really nice, strong, sturdy setups. And it also makes for less assembly. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Terreno journey by downloading the Terreno construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle-free money back guarantee. That means if Terreno's not for you, no problem, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting.